Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Unboxing and Stuff. I can't believe it's already been a week. Well, for you maybe, but not for me. It's only been a few minutes since the last video, but I couldn't wait. I was too excited. I had to come check these out. Today we'll be taking a look at the CZH Labs F1005 and F1008. They're Anderson PowerPole distribution blocks and that I think is the coolest thing that you can pair with a power supply of any type uh, to make your workbench far more usable and user friendly. So let's go ahead and get these out of the box then we'll move in, take a closer look and show you how to set them up and use them and how they operate. So we'll just go ahead and start with our smaller box here. And the cool thing that I didn't realize when I ordered these is that they actually come with a bunch of Anderson power pole connectors. So if you don't have any or you haven't been using them already, this will also be able to get you started. Um, and as you can see back here, I have some other ones I've used prior to getting these. Uh, but these ones actually come with these little rubber grommets so you can cut a hole in the back. Uh, for the approximate size of your wire and slip them over the top creating a nice secure and protected connector plug so on the future i'll probably be using those guys as well so here is the f1005 model these things are so cool i really like the design and uh, they're simplistic but functional so it's just a nice metal case you have two screw holes on either side, so if you wanted to mount it on the top of a bench or onto a wall, it would be easy, no problem. So you have a single DC input port, which this is the port you'll connect to your power supply. These are rated for up to 40 amps. Uh, this is a 30 amp power supply. So to ensure that I'm not gonna have this overrunning that. I'll probably put a 30 amp fuse for this when I'm using that in conjunction with this guy. So then you have eight output ports. They are all each individually fused, which is great. And so power in and then you can have, you know, use one thing or you can use them all. Obviously you're limited to the maximum of 40 amps with whatever it is you're using. So. Um, in here, they have it pre-populated with two 30-amp connections, two 20s, two 10s, a 5, and a 3-amp. Um, and obviously, if anyone can do simple math, if you add those all up, that's way more than 40 amps. But if you think about it, let's say each one of these is a separate radio, uh, and you have a, two radios that are capable of 30 amps and a bunch of other things that are less, okay? None of these are going to hypothetically be drawing if they're all in standby mode or receiving uh, only maybe one or two amps, one or two amps, half an amp, you know, a third of an amp based on whatever it is or whatever device you plug into it. So you do need to know at a standby uh, amperage, how many amps is that going to be drawing? So you can use your amp meter uh, on here if you wanted, or you could use the amp meter like I have clamp on and figure that out. So with all those things, all these devices connected, let's say there's a total of, you know, eight amps standby. Well, in the last uh, video, you saw this guy was drawing approximately 15 or 16 amps uh, when I was keying up the 100 watt radio. So I could key up this radio and still have that eight amps here plus my 16, that's only 24 amps, so I should still be good to go. Obviously, if I exceed the 30 amps, we have a problem. If I am trying to transmit on multiple radios at the same time or have something that actually draws 20 amps plus standby, you know, so you just have to be cognizant of how much your standby amperage is actually drawing. And so with this, nice thing is on here, you can click over to your amp meter boom, you're reading the standby amps just by anything that you plug in and turn on. So you can do them one by one and verify, okay, hey, I'm at eight amps uh, and I know this draws X amount of amps, good to go. 
So anyways, that's pretty cool. They also have these little LED indicators. So if you blow a fuse, you will know which fuse is blown. That way you'll be able to determine which piece of equipment is not working. So that's the F1005. And these all have the Anderson power ports on the front. So this would be really good for a wall mount. Um, definitely could be a desktop mount as well. So let's go ahead and move over to the F1008 model. And once again, Looky there, we have, I believe each of these is 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, eight, So which makes sense because that's how many output ports these come with. So another eight of those. We got a nice long string of our little rubber boots. We have our little connectors or to go under our wires that slip into the plastic housings. This one comes with obviously the F1008 and a cool diagram here with a schematic and gives you the overall dimensions and uh, lets you know how that works. So this one is also a little bit more fancy. So let's go ahead and get in here. So this was essentially, right, same kind of concept, fused input, fused outputs, LED indicator lights, and our Anderson power pole connectors. You'll notice that they're on the bottom of this instead of facing outwards like this model. So this one would be connecting down like this, or if you had it on a bench up against the back wall, you could connect to it from the outside like that. So that's kind of cool difference there. This one also has under normal and over uh, voltage indicators. So it has a voltage monitor circuit inside here. And it should buzz, operate a little buzzer, which I'm assuming that's what this little port is here. You hear if the voltage is under normal or over. So um, we might play with that a little bit to see what that looks like. I could have get my other adjustable power supply and connect this up and uh, we can see that in operation. So that is pretty cool. And this I believe is a schematic for the, yeah, for the first one, the one zero zero five. As you can see, this does not have the voltage monitor circuit in it. So it's a little bit more simple um, and depending on what kind of power supply you're plugging into it, it may uh, you know, not be something that you need. So let's go ahead and reset in here. We're just gonna do a simple uh, connection up, get it connected to a radio and uh, transmit and just see how that works. And then uh, after that, I'll grab my other power supply and we'll see if we can't get the under normal and over voltage uh, indications here to trigger on the F1008. Okay, so the first one we're gonna hook up is to the F1005, and I have my output off of the power supply. And keep in mind, the power supply is off currently while I'm connecting and disconnecting power. And then I'm gonna take the two plugs off of the radio. I'm gonna put them in the dual 20 amp feed here and just go ahead and power their supply on and there you go you heard the beep that means our radio turned on so we have a green indicator light none of the red lights are illuminated at the moment so the way these work is when you have something drawing power off here say boom that fuse blew this is a dual unit so obviously it's gonna be a little more complicated and then bam that fuse blew. Now you can see that once the power has been blown to a device pulling power, the LEDs will actually illuminate. And if you take out a plug with nothing on it, then there's no problem. So it has to have the current going through it for it to actually illuminate and show you that there is something, there's a failure there. So that's pretty cool that it's not just gonna go off in case you wanted to keep some of these unpopulated or or whatever, then uh, that's something that you can do.
So let's go ahead and shut this all down. We'll put the fuses back into this and then we'll jump on to the F1008 model. Okay, and another thing just to point out real quick is I would not be replacing fuses or anything like that, adding and removing stuff with power applied. So just turn your power off if you're gonna replace or insert fuses, you don't wanna short anything out. Uh, so just keep that in mind for safety. Okay, our next model here, the F1008. So power supply is currently off. We're going to go ahead and apply our input power there. And then we'll go ahead and do the same thing. Since we're gonna not gonna actually be keying up the radio, we'll just connect a single uh, connection for the radio. So let's go ahead and fire it up. And as you can see here, our normal light is green and it's illuminated. And we'll try the fuse pull. Boom, there you go. There's our fused light, letting us know that the fuse blew. Uh, so it's an open now. So let's just try this. Let's turn the power off on the power supply and see if we get our under voltage light at all. Oh, there you go. So there was just enough power at the low to uh, initiate our under voltage beep and light. So now we've seen how these generally work. We understand the general concept. So why don't I go and grab my other power supply and we'll connect it up and we'll see if we can't get the under and over voltage to go off and we'll see at what voltages that actually happens at. So let me go ahead and do some movie magic and we'll get started on that. Okay, so here I have my Skytop Power PS2110. If you guys wanna see a review on that power supply, go ahead and check back in my videos and uh, you can check out that and how that sucker works. So first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and plug in my power in voltage with the power supply off. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. And I had preset it to 13.8 volts. So let's go ahead and slowly drop the voltage down and see at what point we get a low voltage alarm. 12. Oh. So it looks like at 11. Okay, so 11.8 is the lowest the voltage can go before you start getting an under voltage alarm. So that's pretty cool. So if you're running this through off of batteries for something, um, good ind indicator. Usually I feel like most of the stuff that I would do would be like 11, 9, so anyways, we got our under voltage. Now let's go the other way and see when we hit our over voltage. So 13.8, pretty common. So 15 volts, we're getting our over voltage, which is great. This is, it's simple. You know, it's probably not a perfect, you know, super fancy system, but it's general and it, it does what it's supposed to. It shows you when the voltage is too high for your 12 volt stuff and it shows you when it's getting too low. So I think that's pretty cool and it obviously works. So let's go ahead and reset and we'll talk about these two distribution blocks. All right, guys. Well, you saw it here. Uh, they're simple, they're functional, and honestly, I think they're super cool because it gives you the ability to use way more uh, of your power supply to do a broad range of things and not having to do a single uh, item at a time. So um, ideal setup probably would be with a 40 amp power supply. That way you can get 
a little bit more juice out of this. But like I said, uh, the other one I have is a 30 amp and this one's approximately a 10 amp. So 30 amper is gonna be the one that goes on here. Uh, the over and under voltage on the F1008 model is super cool. I'm really happy that they did something like that. This would be great, especially for uh, a power supply that you're not able to check all the time for voltage for whatever reason, or maybe something running off batteries. Um, really neat addition. But uh, I mean, they're simple and they're cool. I don't, I don't really know what else I could say about them. They also just work, so that's awesome. I love the fact that they come with connectors. So if you guys are interested in getting any of these, um, these are a little bit cheaper than I believe the MFJ models that I was looking at. Uh, I, I wanna say off the top of my head, uh, could be a little off, but this is the 1008s in the neighborhood of $75, and the 1005 is in the neighborhood of $50. So they're definitely cheaper than the other brands that I've seen out there. And as far as the quality goes, I, I couldn't be any happier. Um, so if you guys want to check them out, links to the uh, Amazon will be below. And I'm an affiliate, so if you do pick up these or anything else uh, in a time window after clicking on the links, uh, I can get a small kickback. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but it helps fund the channel so we can get cool stuff like this to show you guys. So... I think that about wraps up the review. I'm really excited to start using these. I have a ton of 12 volt stuff and the ability to be able to connect multiple items uh, on my bench is pretty exciting. So uh, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I look forward to seeing you on the next one where we will be looking at some more cool stuff, which I already know what it is, but you will have to wait to find out. All right guys, have a good one. We'll talk to you later. Bye.